Test, test. Let's see. Hello. It's good to see you. I am indeed. And my tech is alive, which is nice. Including my light bulb. I have uh, smart bulbs for various things so that um, I can like have it whiter light during the mornings and more orange or even red light during the night um, so that I'm not screwing up my circadian rhythm um, but it turns out if you flip the switch on it like on the wall it resets it so <laughs> Uh, that's what I've been doing for the last 10 to 15 minutes. And then makeup was an absolute pain in the arse. Got done with 95% of it, and then the last 5% took way too long. But... Oh, the, um, the camera is independent of the monitor now. I finally remembered that I had a tripod and uh, I finally um, oh good times with smart home stuff <laughs> Philippine, yeah so uh, I finally got it on its own tripod so it's uh, independent from the monitor which means that uh, you know I can actually do stuff with the monitor or the cat can come and totally do whatever it does to the monitor and it won't be an issue Also means it's just a little further back, it's a little further up. So, yeah. <laughs> and in the meantime, I also um, realized that um, an update to the graphics driver I did meant that I could go back to a high GPU, low CPU load um, setting that I used to be on. Yeah. It's like the other uh, GPUs sitting at about 60% handling it, which gives the uh, the CPU quite a bit more room to work with. I think it decreases the load on the CPU by 10 or 20%. So, fewer issues there. And it's not like um, I'm um, streaming gaming, which, like, you know, would like to do, but also just never had the um, the computer for it. But... Yeah, if I was doing that, then I would actually want my GPU for other things, but as it stands, everything that I would do on stream or during stream is CPU related. So, good amount of processing headroom for sure, yeah. Especially the spikes, you know, it's, there are certain things that cause CPU load and really quick spikes and I don't want that or those um, screwing with the uh, screwing with the stream itself let's see oh where did I put there we go reverb is good Okay. <laughs> 
are finally here. Which means edit the little stream announcement and then we can get going. So uh, how have your nights been so far? Or days? Hopefully less frustrating than mine. Even the shoulder rest wants to get on the action. For some reason it wasn't uh, hooked properly. So just, I pressed like this and just completely collapsed. Did taxes, delicious lunch on the Puget Sound. Ooh. Mm. What sort of food did you get to have? Hey, Cedric. It's good to see you. Having a decent evening so far? Or morning? You're in the morning range, aren't you? Let's see. Do that. Calamari and fish and chips. Ooh. I am rather envious of you. Calamari is definitely one of my favorite things to have. Although the uh, fish and chips are definitely up on that list too, but uh, oops. Calamari, there's just something different about it. Wish I could just block off my whole desk from my cats. Every once in a while my um, Aurora drinks a little too much water and regurgitates a mouthful of it. And uh, she's back in the cables. Oh dear, oh dear. That is the light that I was dealing with just a little while ago. Let us see what we can do here. Right. That's not good news. Lights currently aren't responding to my smart buttons. Yeah. Oi, what should be? Oh dear, oh dear. Offline. And unreachable. Well, I suppose. I'll just reset it real quick. We are back. Hmm. <sighs> I may have. 
have to leave it off if it's doing this. Yeah. Well, let us see what we can do about those shadows. And then I'm going to have to deal with Mm. No, doesn't really work, does it? Let's see. Mm. Hmm. This is probably the best we can do for now. If it's Hugh, I think there was an update this week that forced you to power cycle the hub. Mm. Oh dear, oh dear. All right. Well. Let's actually get playing then. Did I put on rosin? Yes. Start time 2000. Symptoms sound similar to an issue I had this week. Ah. Uh, what do you mean by cycle the hub, by the way? The Wi Fi that they're all connected to, or. Because I don't think, um, unless hub like the actual smartphone that's controlling it. Hmm. have a hub. So the, um, the bulbs themselves are just screwed into the um, house light sockets. Oh, probably not Hugh. Let's see. TP-Link. There are certain um, devices that act as hubs for the uh, for LED strips, I think, but I don't use one at the moment. <sighs> right, warm up. Um, what piece shall we do for warm up? Something relatively simple and light? Mm, no. It causes lighting issues in the front. Mm. This is all terribly difficult to deal with. Mm. I wonder if mess with its white balance. Can I just gain this? Mm. 
Zelda Overworld? That's not a bad warrant piece. Alright. Let's get this show started. Well, that's why I didn't have that position there. That makes sense. <laughs> Again, that makes absolute sense. Overworld from The Legend of Zelda. And thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's one of the ones that I like for the um, slightly warmer months. Not full summer because it doesn't breathe as well as some of my other outfits, but uh, yeah. I think technically, so this is um, in Japanese, haoru is to kind of put over your shoulders. And so this, I think this technically counts as a haori, whereas um, kimono and yukata are like full outfits, um, with yukata being a much, much lighter, more um, usually summer-oriented one. Yeah, this is just haori. <laughs> Works surprisingly well with, the, um, with this particular miniskirt for some reason, but doesn't work with others. All right, let's see about sight reading um, Fallen Town again. I know we had this requested a f two streams ago, maybe. Um, I'm taking a look at it and thinking about the, uh, the various tempo changes, what I can do with the, uh, the phrasing, so. This is falling down.
has fallen down from Undertale. Is it the reprise? No, there is no reprise on this one. No, it is the reprise. <laughs> Already didn't have a hard time with names. Having reprise be in the um, the file name, but not on the sheet music itself, does not help me along. Oh, thank you. Let's see. All right. Let's go from that straight to um, Chrono Trigger, shall we? It's mostly been uh, committed to memory already, but it's nice to have the, um, the sheet music here. So something that um, my teacher used to say is, you know, and I'd play these pieces hundreds, for some, maybe even a thousand times over the course of learning it. And really, uh, I would just memorize it, right? Um, not trying to memorize it, but just my fingers would naturally, you know, learn the pieces. And all I would really need to do is make sure that I knew where the repeats were um, and where the connections between sections were. Um, and so when I, you know, told my teacher, oh, no, it's, it's all right, I don't need the sheet music. It's, you know, a stand would just be extra cl clutter, right? She told me, it's just put it on the stand, open it, turn the pages as if you were reading it. Um, you don't need to be actually, um, actually reading the sheet music. It's just a comfort blanket. It's just the thing that you've been doing for, you know, however long, right? Um, so yeah. So let me see if this, does that blow it out completely or does it, is it just better at this range? Mm, that blows it out just a smidge too much. Wait a minute. <laughs> ah, sorry. That's, Things are bothering me as I'm playing and looking, looking at myself play. Mm. There we go. Love getting to muscle memory part of learning a piece. Yeah, it's uh, one of the big differences that it makes is that when you're reading, you're just reading, right? Um, I have the sheet music um, for Chrono Trigger or for, um, or for uh, Fallen Down. Um, but when you're reading, you're reading and there's a lot of processing power um, being taken by the actual reading part of it, right? Um, whereas, with when you're just playing it from memory. Um, there's a lot more expressiveness involved. There's a lot more um, not thinking about, oh, I see that note. What is that note, right? Um, the actual reading part. And more, okay, I know what this music is supposed to sound like. What should it sound like? What should it feel like, right? Um, and so there's a lot of, uh, It allows you more room for expression um, compared to just reading the sheet music. Um, yeah, I have, uh, she, I wrote um, an arrangement for Chrono Trigger and the sheet music I'm reading off of um, for Fallen Down is a uh, piano arrangement. I don't, uh, something, something. Um, I wish I could get rid of a part of my UI and I cannot. And it's covering up a word. Don't found well sheet music. Um, like you can't find good good sheet music. Mmm. 
Yeah, it's for some pieces especially it's hard to. Um, okay, that may be just a little bright. <laughs> it's uh, darn lighting. Um, but yeah, it's, um, when I can't find good sheet music, I will actually just write it out myself. Um, and so that's uh, part of. That's kind of part of being a musician is uh, having to do that part, you know. <laughs> I don't like it, but for pieces that I really need the sheet music for and I want to play, I need to. Okay, where was I? There it is. Here's the, uh, the main theme from Chrono Trigger. Oh wait, I had the whole, I had reverb on the whole time I was talking, gods. Ay, 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 tonight is absolutely scuffed. trigger. Thank you, thank you. Let's see. Let's do meditation from Thais. 
so frazzled I'm uh, not even remembering to turn off reverb, which is... Mm. Was meditation from pace. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, I can share fallen down because it's just a link, but I will have to uh, figure out a way of uploading it. Um, uploading um, the the other arrangement. Or though, I was actually thinking. Oh, hi Jenny. It's good to see you. 
Welcome to the stream. So uh, everything's a little scuffed right now. I absolutely have to move this out of the way again. Otherwise, I'm going to clong it. I can just go on super low power. Like I had it before. Oh. Um, the, the custom arrangements that I've done, I'll probably put it as part of, um, the coffee page, but I also have to figure out a way of uploading them without absolutely doxing the hell out of myself, um, or creating, uh, s security vulnerabilities. So I will uh, get back to you when I'm, um, when I actually figure that part out. Ah, yes, the like button. Too bad I can't hit my own like button. It's just like, of course I like my music. Why wouldn't I hit the like button? Let's see, let's see. Rosalina? Oh. A crow? Crow? One of the two. wonder, does this just being off do anything to the lights? It, mm, eh, mm, yeah. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder. That's not terrible. Yeah, that is not terrible. Oh, a crow is Cedric. <laughs> oh, is there a darker background? Doesn't look bad. Okay. That's good to hear, at least. Yes, miss? I'm on stream. You know that. Hmm. A meow in the background. Yeah, it's coming from over that way. <laughs> So I turned the, um, that light to blue. Um, she's currently out of reach. <laughs> if she comes up, I'll definitely, uh, show it and show her to you. Um, she has a habit of coming up fairly frequently, so I imagine it shouldn't be too long. In the meantime, I have a couple of requests. Oh, Chrono Trigger main theme. Um, I, I, I just played it and you missed it. Um, is it alright if I delay the, um, the Chrono Trigger main theme for maybe 20, 30 minutes-ish? <laughs> we will see, kitties. <laughs> Thank you. So, ideally, I would just, um, have the, uh, the system itself handle the, um, the repeats, but whenever I play a piece myself, just from, you know, meandering my repertoire, I don't actually input the, uh, the pieces every time. And so people don't know that, uh, it's been played. Which is... Mm. <laughs> I have thoughts about it. I have possible solutions. Uh, and all of them include more work, either for me or for somebody else. But... In the meantime, quick water reminder. Then, Common Observatory. Ooh, smash. Yes.
This is Rosalina's Common Observatory. Yeah, I have uh, one piece from Super Smash Brothers in my repertoire. Um, Jenny actually um, requested it, and then I think MJ put it in for you as well, maybe? Or requested it for himself? All right, this is uh, Menu 1, which is from Super Smash Bros. Melee. I think one of the, uh, the few original pieces that was in the game, just by its very nature, right? A lot of it, the, um, the pieces are from various soundtracks from Nintendo's various franchises. But Menu 1 just happens to be one of the uh, very, very iconic pieces that is very much Smash. Menu one from Super Smash Brothers Melee. <laughs> Let's see, flashbacks of all the times I played Brawl's boss rush mode. Ah, I didn't really play Brawl much, so, uh, well, pardon that. I didn't realize that uh, that's where they had put that. I knew they had used it, um, here and there, um, at various points in the series, but, uh, it's nice to know the specifics. I just realized a lot of that scrubbing went through the mic. Hmm. It is a classic after all. <laughs> it's just epic. Yeah. They use it all over? Oh. Where else have they used it before? Also, no worries, MJ. If uh, the same piece gets requested by two different people, it just shows up still as the same entry. But wherever that entry is, it says requested by multiple people. I'm sure there's a way to make it so that, like, if it's requested by multi multiple people, it automatically goes up the list or something, but... Meh. <laughs>
Let's see, let's see. What shall we play? What shall we play? Hmm. I think it's still used in classic mode somewhere. Can't think of exact examples off the top of my head. Um, what's classic mode, by the way? in the sky. We can definitely do that. Maybe do a little bit more uh, Studio Ghibli too. Also I suppose I should get the, uh, the usual poll going to see what uh, people are feeling today. The mode you fight Master Hand in. Ah. Oh. I'm glad they had that in um, Ultimate, right? Smash Ultimate. Do some of the things. They still have classic mode? That's good to hear. It's, uh, honestly, I'm really not sure what uh, they're going to do after Smash Ultimate. I mean, it's, it's right in the name, isn't it? It's kind of a, a culmination of their whole uh, a Smash franchise. But like Nintendo being Nintendo, I don't see them really like putting it down and just letting it be. I'll probably want more installments of Smash or something to replace Smash um, in, well, if not the next generation, then the, uh, the generation after that in terms of uh, consoles. And thank you for the requests. Hi. The, um, oh. um, so I have Kimio no Sete from Laputa Castle in the Sky, and then the Tetris theme, and then When You Wish Upon a Star, and then the Chrono Trigger main theme, which got another vote. Um, I don't know who High is, but uh, yeah, has two people requesting it now. <laughs> This is Kimi wo no Sete, the ending theme to Studio Ghibli's Laputa Castle in the Sky.
written by Hisai Shijo. Hi, Al. Hi, Olivia. It's good to see you two. Um, by the way, Al, are you the one that requested it, um, requested pieces with the username Hi? Or is that somebody else? Let's see. Oh, we actually have quite a few requests now. Let's see. Tetris, When You Wish Upon a Star, Chrono Trigger, Shepherd's Flute, Princess Mononoke, and Merry Go Round of Life. It's, uh, actually, I have a friend right now that's um, watching uh, Princess Mononoke with their partner tonight. And they're, they've seen it, but their partner hasn't ever seen it before. So uh, it'll be an interesting experience for them, I think. Hmm. Feels weird playing in the dark. <laughs> like I'm not quite sure where the, uh, the boundaries of my space are. Yeah, feels weird. <laughs> Anyway, um, let's do Tetris, and then When You Wish Upon a Star.
First one was the first theme from Tetris, and then the next one was When You Wish Upon a Star from Disney's Pinocchio. And thank you, thank you. I'm uh, kind of wondering how many people actually associate When You Wish Upon a Star with Pinocchio, and how many of you associate it with just Disney in general? Because for me, I don't have very strong um, memories of Pinocchio. Um... And so for the longest time, like when I, until I looked it up to put it on my repertoire list, I just thought it was Disney's theme. Like, you know, it felt sort of fitting to represent Disney as a whole, right? Um, and I had, um, I see it in the, uh, like the Disney splash intro things for their movies and yeah. Olivia, Disney in general for me. Don't know from Cedric. Toad's Pinocchio for you, MJ. That movie freaked me out when I was... Right? I, I'm i not quite sure what it is about it. But yeah, it's... I I think Pinocchio and Dumbo just... Mm, not good memories. Not good memories. Whereas as dark as uh, Totoro gets. Um, at times, right? Um... Had a really, really good impression of, uh, a really happy impression of Totoro. Dance. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So next one, we will actually do the, uh, the main theme from Chrono Trigger. Oh, I would cry when they turned into donkeys when I was a little. I mean, it's, it's kind of, uh, yeah. <laughs> Like, there's scenes like, you know, Elsa's parents go out in a ship and you see the ship capsize and you understand that they, they're probably dead and not coming back. And it doesn't feel nearly as scary as, like, the body horror that goes on in Pinocchio and Dumbo. Like, and of course this is, you know, two or more decades before I even knew the the phrase body horror, right? Like, the fact that that sort of thing can be its own genre of horror in its way. They do turn into donkeys, yeah. <laughs> Is, ugh. Remember what I watched? Didn't feel nothing? Okay, they're donkeys. <laughs> Some Uncanny Valley stuff with Pinocchio, too? Yeah. That's true. I know for, uh, for me, the, um... Uh, the... Oh, what are they called? Like, the animatronic, um... Oh, I just had the word. Valves. Um, animatronic... Animatronic puppetry stuff? Um, that was, like, late 90s, early 2000s. Um, it's not Princess Bride that's, um, it. Um, it reminds me of the, pow of the Babe with the Power, that one. I forgot what the name of it is, but, like, that era of very Western, I think, animatronic puppetry. Uh, what did Vor say? A botch transformations creepy as... Nah? Yeah, that's true. A yeah, good twist of Pinocchio and Shrek. I don't remember how Shrek handled Pinocchio. Was it this... Does he do a stand-up routine? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, the, uh... The animatronic puppetry stuff for me um, fell right into the uncanny valley. And so even now, I, I really don't like them. Whereas, you know, it's, oh, what are they called? Like Crystal Tower and that sort of thing? Um, I know a lot of people that like them as like really classics, right? Um, 
For me, they're still in the uncanny valley. I, it's really hard to get over it. Anyway. <laughs> Something that absolutely is not uncanny valley is Chrono Trigger. Same, MJ, same. <laughs> Squaresoft's Chrono Trigger. Oh yeah, I don't think I uh, asked this when you came in, but uh, Al and um, Olivia, how are your evenings going? Or perhaps did you just wake up? I think Olivia's on my side of the world, but uh, never quite sure when you're up and when you're uh, sleeping. Pardon. Shows up trying to be a real boy to a Rumpelstiltskin? I don't know what Rumpelstiltskin is. Huh. The name's familiar, but I've got no vis uh, nothing visual. I totally forgot about that. Disney's first attempt at horror was The Black Cauldron? I have, like, one or two like, second to two second long snippets of animation associated with uh, Black Cauldron, but nothing more. Sleep schedule always crazy? My night's going well, thank you. That's good to hear. Hopefully we can add to it a little bit. Um, not familiar with that one more. Time to Google. Oh, wait, I am. It's one I've not even thought about since I was very young. Yeah, it's is part of the uh, Rumple is part of the story of spinning straw into gold. I'm not familiar with that one. Hmm. 
super creepy. <laughs> oh, thank you, Olivia. It's always good to have you here. All right, so main theme's done. Can do shepherd's flute. What's it be? it. And then Princess Momoke. What's it be? Shadow me. She's trying to get through a space that absolutely should not be attempted to got, be gotten through. Not for her size, anyway. And she's small, but this space is... <laughs> um, you give a captured princess the ability to please her capture and return for her firstborn. Huh? Yeah, I don't think I'm familiar at all with the, uh, the story. Absolutely nothing is ringing a bell. But let's do Shepherd's Flute and then a couple of Studio Ghibli pieces. And then on to Ocarina of Time.
That then it can be oh boop boop. <laughs> I can swing farther and I can not have issues with uh, almost hitting it with my bow. Hopefully. <laughs> and thank you, MJ. That was uh last one was Princess Monoke, and then the one before that was called Shepherd's Flute from the Lineage 2 soundtrack. Which is probably a game that uh, only I know War knows of it, and I know of it, but, uh, and then MJ, you know, learned through me, but I'd be really surprised to actually meet somebody who knows that uh, music from, from playing Lineage 2 itself. There, it's Rumpelstiltskin Fairy Tale, uh, Grim Fairy Tale, so there's that, uh, just thought I was wrong, she wasn't being held like a captive. There are a lot of uh, captives, though, in old fairy tales. All right. Next one is the Merry-Go-Round of Life. And this one is from Studio Ghibli's Howl's Moving Castle. Um, as uh, as with the, uh, the previous piece, written by Hisaishi Jo.
didn't click the refurb. And also, this is being very much non-cooperative. We'll see if that stays at that height. This poor thing. Thank you, thank you. That was the, uh, the merry-go-round of life from Howl's Moving Castle. And yep, um, I made it so that Nightbot uh, doesn't allow links because you can do all sorts of stuff with links. And people, uh, you get enough people together and somebody will click on that link. And so I'm, uh, yeah, I'd rather, uh, you know, somebody doesn't end up using my chat as an attack vector for people that I uh, generally care about. Let's see, let's see. Um, you can just describe it to people, though. Um, what's the, uh, the actual name of the anime that's about the other uh, grim fairy tales? Let's see. Prelude of Light, Kokiri Forest, maybe we'll add some uh, uh, Blair of Fire in there. Maybe Song of Storms? <laughs> Alright. So this is uh, music from Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. So the other uh, various... Uh, oh wait, Kokiri Forest is not Prelude of... Not Prelude. Minuet of Forest is the one I'm thinking of. I guess we'll do Prelude of Light, Minuet of Forest, Blare of Fire, and Song of Storms, maybe? And then go carry forest. Let's go carry forest is its own piece. Uh, Grim Fairy Tales classics. Hmm. All the Ocarina of Time friends. Yeah. Want to learn more from Ocarina of Time, but ugh. <laughs> so much to learn, so little time. Even the. I think this week and next week, I'm basically completely inundated with either streams, um, live performances, or rehearsal days. So it's a uh, little bit busy, just a little bit. All right.
Oh, yes. So that was music from Ocarina of Time. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Um, Crazy Bit of Light, Blair of Fire, Menu of Forest, and Song of Storms, I think. Yeah, I think I'm getting those names right. So short, and there's so many names. Um, thank you for that request, Cedric. And thank you to everybody that's been requesting things so far. I like it when the, uh, the request pool is nice and deep. I can just play those without having to uh, think too particularly much. Alright, this next one is from the same Ocarina of Time. It says Kokiri Forest, the very, very first piece that you hear once you get in-game. Well, once you get control of your character, I should say. Kokiri Forest, written by Kondo Koji. Kokiri Forest and Concerned Hobbits basically have the same subject matter. <laughs> that's, I, that's true, isn't it? Haven't seen the other uh, Kokiri cook, but uh, I'd imagine there that's just a limitation of the N64. Requests by Olivia and MJ coming up. Uh, before I do that, I um, just want to say that uh, the stream is maintained by um, my patrons. Um, not a Patreon, but use coffee. Um, especially MJ and Verity. Been very supportive on that front, so uh, thank you to them. I do make the, uh, the survival bit of what I do possible. Um, so otherwise I can't dedicate any time to the stream, and, you know, um, so yeah, if you'd like to uh, donate to me either on a one-time basis or, um, on a recurring basis, oh, it's on powdered wig, <laughs> on a recurring basis, um, coffee, uh, is a good place to do it. I have a link in the description. Um, there's also a Venmo and ca Cash App if that is more your thing, but yeah. Every last little bit helps. 
um, make sure that uh, I stay more or less fed um, and that uh, I still have a roof over my head and that I can get uh, gear as it needs to be replaced. Um, everything from half a year stuff like bow hair to uh, surprisingly frequent stuff. Every once in a while, makeup. <laughs> hello, hello, Flapperbot. You came in just in time to uh, hear my uh, please donate to me spiel. <laughs> but uh, if donations aren't your thing, also uh, the like button and the subscribe button um, help. So there are definitely those. <laughs> Let's see, let's see. Yeah, um, oh, also for anybody that is here that uh, is unfamiliar with how things work, this is my whole repertoire um, that I can pull out on a whim. Um, people can request as many pieces from here as they'd like. Um, and if there are requests, I play them. And once I run out of requests, I meander through my uh, uh, through my repertoire like um, some people go through their fridge going, there's nothing to eat while rifling through a fully stocked fridge. And then you close it. And then you open it again and go, there's still nothing to eat. And you close it again. Meantime. Um, before I play the next piece, let me um, put some more rosin. Here it is. Some more rosin on. It's been an uh, hour and a half since the start of stream. And I actually noticed. And I actually remembered. Which is a rather rare thing. Whenever I remember anything, it's uh, if I remember in the middle of a piece, I'm very, very likely to forget it by the end of the piece. And even if I do remember it by the end of the piece, there's a coin flip chance that I won't actually put it into action. There we go. Rosin, check. <laughs> How's your evening going, by the way, Flapbot? Oh yeah, for anybody who's uh, not familiar, Flapperbot does um, animations on YouTube. So uh, if you like that sort of thing, um, very analog animations as a note. Um, so if that is your thing, I would definitely uh, take that channel, um, take a peek into the channel. There we go. And uh, she has a very um, consistent art style. Fabulous evening. Working on making some patches for a new jacket. Ah. Of course, of course. So I remember, I think I saw the last jacket you um, made too, right? I seem to remember some kind of jacket or overcoat that you made at some point. I don't know if it's the same one, but... Or the, the one that I'm thinking of. In the meantime, this next piece is Beauty and the Beast from Beauty and the Beast. Ah, okay. I did remember correctly. That's good to know.
もちびもうやめもういいでしょもちびあー、like a daisy、um,。Uh, that was Beauty and the Beast from Beauty and the Beast, written by Al、uh, Alan Menken and Howard Ashman.、Um, and yeah, definitely a fan of like a daisy.、Now、the way they actually animated the,、uh, the, um, the violin and also the, the composition too is really cool. So I'm, when I write music,、um, that's, <laughs> 1920s cats are awesome? Yeah, absolutely. When I write music, I don't.、Um, that particular era and style of music isn't something that I'm particularly adept at. And so when somebody can write music of that sort, I'm、uh, maybe slightly envious. <laughs> and in St. Louis, yes, indeed. Let's see, let's see. The next one is Cass's theme from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is one of our beloved waltzes. So if you'd like to pick up your cat and dance, that is absolutely encouraged here. St. Louis prohibitions and shooty things. Yep.
was Cass's theme from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Let's see, does that work better? Yeah, there we go. Hmm. Let's see. Mm, MJ, I'm familiar with Lack of Daisy. It sounds like you need to remedy that situation. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it's uh it was a webcomic first, um, and then recently it, I think, did a Kickstarter and then found a good bit of success. Um, and so they animated um, a pilot, um, which was, as far as I can tell, rather well received. Um, it was the talk of the internet for quite a little while. Um, so yeah, definitely worth a peek. And uh, it's normally I can't endorse um, the way people draw or um, animate or pretend to um, act, play violins. Um, but the, these people are actually decent at it, which is a really, really pleasant surprise. Even, um, oh. Um, do that as my homework. <laughs> yes, and the last comic update was four years ago. Woo-hoo! I'm sure they're pouring uh, as much of their time as they can into animation. Because, God's animation takes so much time compared to um, stills. But, uh, one of the, I mean, this is sort of nitpicky, but sort of not, um, when people draw, um, violinists, right? Um, it's, I'd say one in five visual artists get it right. Um, you know, sometimes they're doing this. Um, sometimes they're doing this, um, you know, it's, it's all very, very weird. Um, sometimes they have it on the wrong shoulder. Um, you know, um, a lot of times the, uh, the strings are very much straight instead of very, uh, close together up here and then out far apart here and then closer together towards the other uh, tailpiece. Um, you know, it's uh, various structures within the violin will be missing, um, wrong number of pegs, like, or the scroll will have some issue with it. It's just, uh, and, uh, you know, <laughs> like as a violinist, it's, it's interesting because especially in this day and age, people can just go out and find reference pictures of violins from every conceivable angle. Uh, I'm sure in 3D as well, if they'd like to. Um, and even compare against, like, violas and cellos and stuff. Um, so yeah. Drawing instruments, uh, it's, it's an issue. <laughs> yeah, it definitely can be. Um, so also for, like, um, flutes. So for vertical flutes, it's usually left hand top, right hand bottom. And the same thing applies to, uh, horizontal ones. And this hand is here. It's the same orientation as a vertical flute. And this hand is out, up and over, uh, dip, 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 yeah, yeah. up and over this side, right? This is the orientation. But sometimes they'll have it like this. They'll have it th like this. It's, it, it, it's interesting. <laughs> and like, I just want to tell all of them, hey, just, just it's, it's okay to look at reference material. <laughs> That sounds like work. Yeah. <laughs> it's even worse in, um, in acting though. It's like, so most actors are not known to play the instruments that, uh, they have to act out the playing of. Um, and with like instruments where you're just pressing keys, it's not super hard to 
do it convincingly. Um, but when you have as many, uh, I don't know what to call it. I mean, they're, they're, for me, they're fa failure points, right? Like the, you know, the hold on my bow, the, you know, the orientation of this, the, the actual fingering. Um, also, where, where the, the bow goes on the, the violin, you know, somewhere between the bridge and here. You can't be all the way out here. You can't be back here. Because this just <laughs> doesn't sound very good. Um, and also, like, you know, each draw of the bow tends to be like a note or a couple notes. Um, and, you know, you have to change strings depending on the, you know, the note you're playing and which position you want to be in. Um, and so... Acting out playing uh, a violin, especially, is very, very common. Um, it's, uh, yeah, violin YouTubers get a lot of mileage from just looking at uh, various attempts to act out um, playing a violin. Um, yeah, yeah. Body doubles that actually know how to play are uh, absolute treasures. Anyway, now that I've gone on that rant... Um, Let's see, I think we have Imperial March and Jolnit Stydiku up next. Before I do that, quick water reminder. All right. Got very picky about any and all scenes of media, I get it. <laughs> Especially when it's, you know, things that are fairly easy to correct. You know, it's, it's, uh, there are certain parts of violin playing that I will not nitpick about. Um, but when it's a multi hundred million dollar production, um, I'd like to get it, I'd like them to at least get it vaguely right. <laughs> or just, you know, hire a body double musician and pay them to do the body doubling. Oh, and taking off for the day. All right, Cedric. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for listening. Have a good rest of the day. Take care. That's all for now. Imperial March from the Star Wars original trilogy, written by John Williams. 
reminder to smush the like button. Yes, <laughs> the algorithm gods demand it. Yeah, they basically do. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you for the request, Flapperbot. Uh-oh, we're down to one request. Kind of curious to see if there are any uh, new people here. Looks like there are. Um, for anybody that's new to stream. Um, so if you know how to access the description of the stream, um, there are many, many useful links there. Um, if you can't or don't know how, um, here's a link to my repertoire. Basically, I sit here and play requests, and when there aren't requests, I meander my repertoire like a lost kitty. Well, then, kitties aren't usually lost, maybe like a lost puppy. Yeah, the uh, description has... Did that actually... That did. Oh, dear. Um... Let me take a quick five minute break. I need to um, sanitize my knee, evidently, because I have been punctured. I don't know if uh, you saw Balbs use my knee um, and come up this way, um, or, and use my knee as a, uh, a jumping off point, but he did, and uh, yeah, so I am punctured. <laughs> so I'll be back. In five minutes, just going to put some alcohol on it, um, cringe, and then uh, I'll be right back.
Oh. Back. Um, murder mittens be dangerous, yo? Yeah. Yeah. Murder mittens are dangerous. Absolutely cute, adorable, fluffy, but dangerous. Hello, Gooey. It's good to see you. Um, stopping by to say good night from Brazil. Always good to hear your uh, see your lives at the weekend. Thank you, thank you. Hopefully you're still here to at least uh, hear a piece or two. Mm, Flapperbot's gone to bed. Oh dear. All right. What are we looking at here? Joan it's Taiduk and then Tressa. All right. Let me do a quick phone thing. Then we shall get started on John It's Dyke. It's already been two hours. It really doesn't feel like it. Every time I play, it's feels like. I mean, like I've had stream some streams where like, I go, okay, I'm gonna play for maybe two hours today because I'm not uh, feeling, you know, hundred um, percent. But by this point, I'd be done. I could really pass in the blink of an eye. Like, I think I tracked it to hour and a half for the rosin, but then, yeah, like, really, first hour and a bit in the last 30 minutes of just, poof. flown by for sure. I'm good it has. I'm, I'm glad it has for you. There we go. Sometimes I cannot seem to say the things correctly. And here I am talking to the internet. <laughs> Effectively, partly talking for a job, right? Professional talker. It's, uh, it's interesting, it's uh, like thinking of myself as a bard, not just a violinist, has freed me up in a lot of ways. But also, there are expectations of a bard. I can't do poetry. Um, I can really only sing with my limited, uh, limited vocal range. So, yeah. <laughs> it's a thing. Words are hard. I do am a professional talker, I suppose. Oh. All I knew was that, um, you worked in tech of some sort. I hadn't realized that there was a, uh, a vocal component to your work. Very forward facing. Mm. That makes sense. Having to deal with people. I don't, I really don't envy uh, jobs where, like here it's not too bad, right? I'm sitting here giving people something and, you know, sometimes they come in and make requests that I can't play and that's really about the extent of it. Um, 
I do remember uh, back when I streamed on Twitch, a um, uh, cellist came in and I was like, hey, can you play something classical? And I played in one of the Bach cello suites. It was like, that was terrible. And you butchered it. And it's just like, okay. <laughs> to be fair, he was a good cellist, but also like I've had literal cellists from the Portland Symphony Orchestra just stroll by where I was playing outside and like adore the cello suites when I played them. So like, eh. But other than that, it's, like, really not not too difficult. Whereas a lot of um, public-facing jobs, it feels like the, the people that have to do that job get... Uh, really the worst of the public, it feels like. Many people. <laughs> Which, yeah, it sucks. Also the, um, so like here I don't fake emotions, right? Um, if I'm feeling a thing, I express it or I don't. Um, but generally the way I'm feeling is the way I'm feeling. I'm not putting on an act, um, in terms of feeling things for people. Um, I definitely like, you know, if it's a really super melancholy piece, like I might not be melancholy in the moment, but I can also feel the piece as I'm playing it. Um, but I know in a lot of uh, public facing jobs, um, especially service sector, um, after a while, people actually start lose uh, disconnecting from their own actual emotions because so much of their work habitualizes that disconnect especially in the u.s like always smiling for you know whatever and whoever the customers are and super unhealthy <laughs> like you know that's uh we feel things for a reason um we don't always have to act on them but also like denying that we are feeling them is maybe not the healthiest way to live and not the healthiest thing to habitualize yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Basically, public-facing workers get the absolute meep end of the stick. Anyway, here's Jonas Steidig. <laughs> Venting can be very important. Yeah. <laughs> Before I play, I should probably tune. done in a healthy way? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, spiraling and just um, adding to it is not good, but venting pressure is definitely super important. You bottle up inside and then eventually you become a, uh, um, you know, like say a failed water heater.
was Jonet's Taik, written by not Saishi Jo Hakase Taro. For the Japanese TV show Jonet's Taik. Let's see, let's see, let's see. The next one is Tressa the Merchant. This is a piece from Square Enix's Octopath Traveler. It's a Switch era um, JRPG, but it uses modern technology to um, mimic the 8 bit pixel art style, but in Unreal Engine. So uh, it's bloody gorgeous. It's also really fun. Um, recommend playing it if uh, you have the chance. I haven't gotten to play um, Octopath Traveler 2, so no guarantees there. But uh, definitely um, recommend one. And God, so it's soundtrack too. Holy cow. It's, um, there aren't too many games that have this many catchy, recognizable pieces. But, yeah, that's, I mean, one for each character, so that's eight. And then the other uh, main theme. And then the battle themes, the, the boss themes. There's even a, um, a super final boss theme that is just wonderful. Um, and then there's also a track called Determination, which is probably one of my favorites. Anyway. I'll stop talking and uh, play. This is Tressa the Merchant. Tress of the Merchants, one of the eight characters from Octopath Traveler. That was written by Nishiki Yasunori. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Let's 
see, let's see. China has become rather quiet. Um, Gains are still winning in the poll. Let's keep going with those. Let us see, let us see. <laughs> Maybe some Pokemon. Yeah, let's do some Pokemon. Um, this is Pallet Town, Route 1, and the Pokemon Center themes from the first generation of Pokemon.
was Palette Town, Route 1, and the Pokemon Center theme. Um, oh! Palette Town, Route 1. Okay. <laughs> check, check. Hmm. Oh, kitty. <laughs> Let's see, what shall we play next? Any requests? <laughs> oh yeah, it's, I'll have time for games at some point. Yeah, I feel that. It's, um, wanted to play Elden Ring pretty much every day this week, and I've managed to play it, I think, none of the days. And, like, I've sort of had time, but also I've had days where I'm exhausted and just can't really do anything. Um, aside from the, uh, the tasks I need to do that day. And so it's been kind of, uh, been on a gaming dry spell for months. Whoa. That is months. Gods. I just realized with, um... with your sort of time commitments like games that are um like shorter like you know in the 10 to 20 hour range are probably the best aren't they it's like games that you know can eat up like a hundred hours or two um those would uh, eat up too much time unless you really liked it right know people that are perfectly happy playing one game for months and months and months um but also you know for gamers that are fond of actually playing varied games but don't have time those are far more doable yeah definitely that's kind of sad because the um uh, even while I'm playing, like, there'll be, with difficulty, whether it's, um, like, mechanical or, um, puzzles, there's actually a voice in my head nowadays that becomes impatient because I don't have that much time. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like 60 hours in a Persona 5, really tried to finish it, but sits unfinished. Yeah, that's... Can't blame you. I think, uh... Honestly, I was thinking, um, games like Hades might actually be really good for, um... time constraints. Because, like, I think I've sunk 150 hours, maybe 200 into it. Um, but also... Like, each session doesn't have to be much more than 20 or 30 minutes at a time, you know? And granted, like, if you have to end the session on, you know, a death, yeah, it's kind of, eh. But also it's a roguelike, so you kind of expect dying a lot. Whereas with RPGs, it's very much about the, uh, the progression through the, the story. And so it's... Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. Requests concerning Hobbits, theme of Rohan. Um, also for uh, anybody else that's here, um, if you'd like to make a request, now would be the time to do it. Um, do a last call on requests, and then we're going to play them through, and then... Uh, transition to the stretching and body care part of the stream. It's uh, something I could do. Seen a bit about it? Yeah, it's Hades is... God, it, it's really, really good. Um, it's... 
it manages to actually balance out the disappointment of dying and having to go back to the beginning with um, some slight progression mechanics, um, mechanically speaking, um, but also with the story. The story, most of the story progression happens back at home when you've died, right? And, you know, Zagreus uh, dies and gets ferried by the river Styx back to uh, the house of Hades, i.e. his house. <laughs> and there's so much story to it. Like, most, most roguelikes and roguelites, I mean, it's, you know, it's not going to distinguish those too much, but uh, they... They're really, really light on the lore, right? Um, and there's often not much story to speak of, progression-wise. It's, it's not a story being told in um, what we would think of as a standard storytelling um, fashion. Um, games like uh, Risk of Rain um, comes to mind. Risk of Rain 1 and 2. Um, as different as they are, where Risk of Rain One is two D and Risk of Rain Three is uh, Risk of Rain Two is three D, um, the way they tell their story is through the various items that you find and pick up, and their equipments, right? Like they they do stuff for you mechanically, but also there's, you know, you get little blurbs that give you various just little peeks into um, the world and what's happening in it and what has happened and but there's no progression right the world doesn't change per se um of course in Hades the world actually changes people change characters change um you know, things happen right um and so every death is another chance to go around and look and see if something's happened. If, you know, sometimes dad's home and sometimes he's not. Uh, by dad, I mean Hades, right? Um, you know, sometimes uh, characters that are there most of the time are missing and you go, wait, what's going on? And sometimes it has story significance. Sometimes they're just on break, you know? <laughs> not everybody's at work 24-7. So it's, uh, yeah, in that sense, it's really unique, um, roguelike, and really fun, mechanically fun too, um, in the way that you, um, in the various weapons, in the various aspects of those weapons, um, and basically they, the same base weapon, but they change kind of what's special about them, and also the builds, right, um, basically the whole point is to, um, get boons from the various gods um, sitting among, uh, sitting on top of Olympus, right? Um, which are, who are to Zagreus, his family. Um, and you get these boons, but they can interact in certain ways. They work better on certain weapons, certain aspects of weapons, certain play styles. And then the whole point is to see if you can go and beat your dad up. And then if you succeed once, Maybe again. And maybe that does something. So yeah, Hades. <laughs> also, absolutely rockin' soundtrack. Like at least an 8 or 9 out of 10. Would recommend. It's also probably old enough that you can uh, probably get it for like 50% off if uh, Steam sale's happening. So, yeah. Anyway. I guess um, I'll put the SM64 staff room, maybe, as a final piece. We get uh, Concerning Hobbit's theme of Rohan, and then uh, the staff roll, and then uh, we'll call it night. First here's Concerning Hobbit's by Howard Shore.
concerning hobbits, the theme of Rohan, and then the staff roll from Super Mario 64. <sighs> for anybody that's still around, thank you for sticking with me this far. Thank you for all the requests. Um, I put my violin away, and then we'll enter the stretching portion of this stream. Where basically I sit here and stretch on stream to make sure that I actually do stretch. Let's see, let's see. Okay. Right, let's check these off. Hopefully I can figure out how to uh, get the light to be stable again. So definitely don't enjoy playing in the uh, the dark here. Feels really odd. Is it? Uh, I think it's probably darker in here than the camera lets on. Just because of the uh, the way I've got the other uh, lighting. Um, tomorrow, Sunday, okay. <sighs> Camera doesn't look that dark. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of fiddling that had to go into it. Um, not this sort of fiddling. <laughs> um, but we did eventually land on some settings that uh, didn't make this look absolutely terrible. Um, definitely still some issues compared to uh, what I'd like it to look at, but or to look like, but. Not the worst thing in the world. Nope. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just super glad that it, we didn't have any audio issues tonight. Because that would have been a royal pain in the arse. I'm actually super excited today because the, uh, uh, having the tripod um, meant that the camera was just a little farther away. Um, and when I, you know, come up like this, it's not quite uh, as close to the camera. Um, where did that go? There it is. No jump scares. Yeah. God, the fact that that could even happen is just frustrating as hell. Yeah, the uh, reverb's working one minute and the next minute it is for some reason just outputting noise. But the settings haven't changed, right? Like it's, you know, you literally sit there and stare at the settings and the reverb is screaming and the reverb just acting as reverb are the exact same settings. It's like, but also it happens a lot, right? Um, pretty much uh, when I open up OBS, it's a coin flip whether the reverb is screaming at me or not. Um, 
Yeah, you, you'd think so. But... I mean, it must be some sort of... Yeah, it's... It must be some something about the way that Obius handles Reaper, perhaps? Because I know I've had it happen on multiple different um, uh, pieces of software. Um, not, not in terms of, like, OBS, but in terms of plugins. Um, it's like, I think I have two or three different plugins that can all do Reverb. Um, that I've tested and, you know, like, the, the one I've um, settled on is the current one, right? Um, but, like, the, this phenomenon's happened, I think, with every single one. Um, and really, the only way to um, stop it from happening, like, to stop it in the moment, is to just fully turn off that particular um, effect um, in OBS. Like, it's, you know, there's equalizer plugin, reverb plugin, and then I have compressor and limiter, I think. Um, and so, yeah. I don't know. Frustrating. Like, if I had um, some of my friends here that, or like my bandmate, that actually do um, more of the, the, yeah, the audio processing side of things, then um, driver incompatibility? Incompatibility? Yeah. Okay, good. Every once in a while, a kitty pees on one of these, and it's just like, oh, that, that would be bad. Yeah, with audio driver incompatibility, you'd think that it would just be incompatible all the time. Um, in conflict with the software, yeah. I mean, like, I, with, um, when I was trying to use um, Reaper as audio processing, right? Um, and basically it's uh, effects between the, the mic and OBS. Um, you know, I, I could take a look at it and go, okay, the audio driver's probably, like, getting torn between... OBS and Reaper, and thus, you know, basically, it's, um, it's trying to be exclusive, but have, being ping-ponged back and forth, but with this, it shouldn't have that problem, right, like, it's, it's literally just an effects chain on whatever goes through here, I don't know if the, the, um, it's even, it even has, like, has to deal with the audio driver. Um, once it's pa once it's actually passed through to that point. But, I don't know. At the very least, the, um, the, the EQ wasn't showing any abnormalities, right? And so it's definitely the reverb plugin or plugins I should say multiple it's, yeah it's really weird <laughs> like really really weird and frustrating beats me haven't hit the uh issue with OBS myself yeah, I, I hope you never have to deal with it that's yeah I guess if you know if you never do anything that has to do um where you have to use reverb right which is wait a minute you, you do have to if you're doing music oh Yeah, the, the other option which I may um, eventually employ is just to have hardware reverb between the mic and the preamp, um, which would just allow me to, you know, not deal with this part, right? Um, and like, as long as I've routed it correctly, the, the hardware reverb is really reliable, so my obvious stuff hasn't been music, only gameplay. Oh! Hmm. That's kind of surprising. Okay, let's see. 
What am I looking for? Reverb off? I guess I just... Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> this is what I'm waiting for. All my music stuff is done in Audacity? Mm. Audacity is decent, but... Mm. Once I found Reaper, it was just really basically impossible to go back. All right, let's hand stretch, straighten the arm and pull it back. New to the recording side of music? Hmm. Honestly, if you uh, have half a mind to, I would recommend trying out Reaper. It's um, it can look confusing at first, but once you um, figure out the basics and just isolate what parts of the interface you really have to deal with on a standard recording, um, it's really flexible, um, professional quality, right? Um, and has, I think, a better set of basic tools um, for even just, you know, um, amateur stuff. Used to playing it, not recording it. Yeah, it's, I, I'm in the same position. Um, I would be, you know, absolutely happy if I never had to ever deal with any of the tech side of um, music. Um, I adore computers. But I'm not so fond of having to work um, with various um, computer stuff. Um, yeah, it's... <laughs> um, elbow to shoulder. I think there's like maybe two or three other viewers right now. I'm kind of curious who they are. Like I know most viewers don't actually... Uh, don't uh, comment. And so, like, I don't get to see who's actually in the audience. Whereas in a, um, in meet space, right? If somebody's listening, even if they're not, you know, even if they don't engage with me afterwards or whatever, um, I can see that they're in the space listening. Whereas YouTube has, uh, no mechanic for that. Um, I know, um, with Twitch, I did, um, or even if somebody hasn't commented yet, I could welcome them to the stream. Um, although people tended to announce themselves when they, um, but yeah, with YouTube, it's just totally blind unless somebody comments, which is, uh, <laughs> and then over the shoulder or over the head, I should say. I'm going to lean back a little bit and also tilt the torso to stretch out the, uh, basically I'm stretching this portion, which is latissimus dorsi. Yeah, lats. Um, at the gym, it'll be, you know, lats, lat pull down, but, uh, latissimus dorsi. Dorsi? Dorsi. YouTube likes some level of uh, mystery, I suppose. Uh. <sighs> um, take hands like this and stretch. <clears throat> Same thing, but behind the back. I'd really like if there was there was no mystery. Especially with like the algorithm and stuff. It's just like, mmm.
Let's see, let's see. Wrist stretches. This one. Flip the hand over. Hook the thumb over and touch your nose with your pinky. The algorithm's a strange beast. Yeah. It's uh the whole, you know, like and subscribe stuff and click through rates and uh and what do you call it? It's, um uh retention rate, like after somebody clicks how long they actually stay. Um and yeah, it's it's all uh it's weird because, like, even though the rates don't change, suddenly there'll be a a um a trend difference. You'll YouTube will be suddenly recommending my stuff to a bunch of people over a short period of time, and it's just like YouTube. No, nothing's changed. Literally, nothing has changed. What's what's going on here? Yeah, that's, I know. <laughs> A lot of things that I don't like dealing with, unfortunately. But also something that we have to deal with, especially for me to actually, you know, survive, right? That's, so, uh, yeah. Uh... What have we done so far? Hands, forearms, shoulder, neck. Just straight over. You can let gravity do the work. You can put a hand on the head. Um, not super necessary to have the hand there. Foot. And unfortunately, the uh, the one video of mine that YouTube's algorithm really latched onto, even though it was the uh, the worst um, recording environment of all of them, um, and like literally the oldest, so I would have been the worst player, um, hit about 20,000 uh, views sometime this past year, and I had to uh, make it private because, you know, it wasn't me anymore. So I had my necronym, and I was just, yeah. Found the analytics side of my YouTube channel super interesting. It's more of an experiment to learn video editing gameplay. Mmm. Yeah, it's... Oh, video editing. <laughs> like, I'm not so fond of audio editing, but I'll do it. Video editing is just like, okay, let me do the most basic things. Um, and then still image editing is just like, nope, 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 nope. I am going to outsource the hell out of this. Yeah, that's ugh. a lot of frustrating things that uh, have nothing to do with violin, which is, you know, annoying. But also part of being a musician, which is also annoying. Um, look over and let your head down. All right, so we're gonna use the towel. Pin on one side, bring it up and over the other shoulder. Get the hair out of the way. 
freshly washed. It's a little damp. Don't want to damage it. All right. So, ten. Uh, let's see. Can I? Do I have? All right. There we go. Tension. Lean. In. Three to four times. What uh, aspects of the uh, the analytics did you find most interesting? Then uh, same tension. Let's go over to the other side. Maybe one more time. I'm kind of wondering if uh, today is just a um, a quiet Saturday. Usually the uh, the Saturdays are the the most rambunctious around here, but uh, feels very much like a quiet stream day. Of data sets, so literally all of it, looking through and what were the best times. Ah. Oh, and where in the world the videos were hitting? Yeah, that part's kind of kind of curious. Oh, wait, lean in, right. Kind of curious if um, people were out at various events today, because sometimes that'll happen. Some uh, weekends are very much go out to uh, outside events sorts of uh, days, and uh, some days are um, stay inside and look at the internet sort of days. Gonna roll the shoulders. First forward, then back. Events and outdoor things, etc. Yeah. So I'm thinking as the uh, the weather gets better, um, especially during this first part, where the weather is just getting better. You know, people have been cooped inside, cooped up inside all. Uh, winter and getting they're uh, getting out and in, really enjoying a little bit of good weather right um whereas in like the dead of summer you know the weather's nice but maybe it's a little too nice um and also you know it's nice more often so nicer days aren't as special um so yeah I really need to go over my uh, shoulder with a lacrosse ball. I, for one, will be camping next weekend. So I'm really looking forward to it. Ooh. Oh. Internet issue. Come on, internet. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> oh. Ay ay ay. Hmm. Glad 
it's happening at the end though, and it's not the, uh, the beginning, like a few of our streams have been. <sighs> Hasn't even started on my side? Huh. Odd. Is it, uh... For a sec there, it read 47 kilobits per second. But it did jump to 11, 11,000 kilobits. And then come back to the steady 4.4K-ish that it usually runs at. So it may have just uh, compensated. <clears throat> All right. Thank goodness for buffers and jitter correction. Yeah. Even in the um, the visuals. So there's a um there's a, an automatic um correction that goes on. Um turned it off today out of curiosity. And I ended up with um kind of uh Oh, that's what it is. That it must have been the um the frequency of the lights versus the frequency of the camera where the the light lines get um yeah, you can start to see them kind of like a um a camera taking um video of a car's um wheels. So yeah, I, I, but right before I hopped on, I noticed that and uh, went, oh, oh, must have been one of those things that I was fiddling with earlier. Well, that's super fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad there's auto corrections for it. Um, so that would be just that would just be so annoying to watch. Speaking of annoying, I think I'm going to have to uh, see what I can do about this light. So I would rather it not just sit there and flash. Um, but yeah. Anyway, thank you for being here with me. Thank you for listening to the music and requesting things for me to play. Hopefully, uh, tomorrow will go smoothly. Hopefully, I'll have a couple of things worked out by then. Um, I might be just a little late. Um, sing from friends, uh, sing some friends during the day. So, I'm gonna try to make it back in time for an 1800 uh, stream since it's Sunday. Um, oh, it's a pleasure. Oh, and hopefully, your body doesn't get too beat up by tomorrow. <laughs> hopefully, that's, uh, you know, the multiple days of stretching is a slow recovery for your body over the weekend instead of just, uh, beating it up. And then bringing it back to baseline, beating it up, and bringing it back to baseline. <laughs> Which is basically how my body works. <laughs> anyway, night-night. Take care, everyone. Sweet dreams.